What's good my beautiful kings and queens? It's I, Winnie Boyancy. Welcome back to my channel. If you're a newbie, hey, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so they're notified every single time that I upload. If you're an oldie, I appreciate you coming back. I'm currently looking at hot and flustered because I've been running around. I've had my face mask on throughout this plane ride. It literally was only an hour and 30 minutes, but because I was running around, I'm sweating so much. But yes, I'm currently in Italy. I'm in Milan. And I've just come off my train, train, I've just come off the plane, sorry. Currently waiting for my train, which I've just missed one, literally two minutes ago. And I've got a 30 minute wait for the next one. I, which is gonna be interesting. Thank God for City Mapper. It is an absolute godsend because the taxi people here were trying to charge 100 euros. And normally before flying out, I do like to book like a shuttle bus or see if I can get a very cheap deal on taxis. And unfortunately, for some reason, I was seeing like 150 euros, 200 euros. I guess they're just kind of trying to profit on the whole coronavirus thing. But nevertheless, I'm gonna try and vlog as much of this trip as I possibly can. You lot know, I'm not the greatest with vlogs, but I'm working on it. So I'm currently just waiting for my train, which is the second one on the screen. It's coming at 12.56. And the time is 12.32, which isn't bad at all. I'm literally gonna be on it for, I think, four stops before I jump off. So this is how my train ticket looks like. I believe the second one is for the bus or something that I need to get after, which will take me closer to my hotel. But pretty cute. I paid 15 euros, which is about 13 pounds. I shall see how this journey pans out. Guys, look at this train. This train is beautiful. It is so clean. I'm currently really anxious about not being on the wrong train. I hope I'm not on the wrong train. I think I'm on the right train. <laughs> okay, so I'm currently waiting for the train to move. It's literally going to move in the next couple of minutes. And then, literally, you know what? The journey's actually pretty straightforward because I'm using City Mapper. Not that you guys saw me being able to use that. But basically, the journey is not worth 100 euros. So I'm very glad that I just decided to suck it up and actually use public transport. Plus, it's going to be a great way for me to get to know this area a little bit more as well. As I'm only here. Oh, yeah, I don't think I said it at the start of my vlog see you guys I need to fix up but I'm literally here for just three nights so yeah I do want to get familiar with public transport I do want to be able to get around but I think you guys are probably next gonna see me when I'm on the next mode of transportation if it's not too bad I don't like filming people without them knowing but yeah guys I made it I'm obviously really hot and sweaty the weather is really beautiful today I'm currently sat on the bus just waiting for it to move I'm guessing the driver's on a break but yeah I'm just gonna show you guys how the bus looks like it's really really clean and spacious Here's where I'm meant to validate my ticket, but I just want to double check that I am actually on the right bus when the driver comes. Great, so I've just got off the bus and I'm just using City Mapper to work out how to get to my hotel. Apparently it's a seven minute walk, so at least I'm not lost. Okay guys, I have finally just got to my hotel. As you can see, I'm really sweating, like the weather is boiling. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick little tour of my hotel room, and then I'm gonna freshen up and kind of work out what I next want to do with my day. I just realized I haven't ate all day. I haven't even had a bottle of water all day. But yeah, anyway, I digress. So, you come in. And then you walk 
through. Literally have the TV there, cute little desk. I've just dusted my mask there. And then a bed, a single bed, simple. I do like the artwork, it's really pretty. So it looks like this. Um, and then got a cute little wardrobe here. A place to dry your stuff should I wash anything. I'm curious to see what my view is going to be once I'm done struggling. Oh wow, okay. Yes, this is my view. I'm really pleased about that, I'm not gonna lie. I must say, when I was walking here, what really did capture my eye is that I know that this hotel, which is why I booked in the first place, but I can tell that it's local to everything. So, that comes in very, very handy. Um, getting here as well, I obviously didn't get lost. I did I did use City Mapper and I did ask people for directions, bless them. Um, a lot of people that I ask, they don't speak English and I don't expect them to because I am in their country. If anything, I should be able to speak Italian. But it was very interesting how they would respond to me in Italian, but I would still understand what they're saying. So yeah, so far everybody seems helpful. It's getting distracted. Right, I'm gonna show you guys my bathroom. The door is right next to the bed and then you open it and then, oh, okay. Oh, it was gonna drop. There's a step right here that was gonna drop on. And then, okay, it's cute. Oh, that's really cute. And then obviously get a mirror here and then a cute shower. I do like here. I do really like here. So I don't think I mentioned the name of my hotel. My hotel is called Hotel Milano. I didn't get to film coming in and stuff like that because I'm not trying to draw attention to myself, you know, dragging a, um, a suitcase and whatnot and then filming at the same time. I must say one thing that I did notice on my travels is very similar to London. There are a lot of homeless people here. And as I was coming in, there was quite a few homeless people outside. I didn't want to just fling out my camera and start filming because I think that's very insensitive. What I'm going to do is absolutely flipping freshen up because I'm hot and sweaty. But I haven't ate all day, so part of me is thinking maybe I should quickly pop outside and see what food is local. Bring some food in and eat. I don't know. Because I'm thinking by the time I like shower and get dressed and stuff, a lot of time would have went. And I, I don't think it's cool. Is there a fridge? Because guys, remember, if you watch my previous uh, vlog, I didn't have a fridge. Okay, I do have a fridge. It looks like this. There's already drinks and stuff in it. But obviously, you gotta pay. And we ain't trying to do that. So... I'm just trying to work out what I want to do at the minute because I haven't ate all day. I haven't really had water. I think I only had two sips of water before I left my house to go to the airport. The thing is there's a McDonald's literally right next to this hotel. I actually don't normally eat McDonald's and I don't like the thought of eating McDonald's either. I just think it's artificial food that never really digests properly and never fucking expires. So, I'm gonna see what's round and then take it from there. Okay, so earlier on I think I butchered the hotel's name, but this is it. I've just seen this here, so that's useful. That's the name of the hotel that I'm staying at. Okay, so one thing that I want to, I don't wanna say complain, but we'll go for that for now, is when I opened this, I saw this in here. Um, I don't know, I kind of assume that maybe it might be some kind of food menu, but it's a form that has already been filled in by somebody that was previously staying in this room. I'm not really impressed by that personally because why has it not been cleared up? Why is, why is it still here? And also, even though I have um, read this, which is kind of like the terms and conditions for staying here, the fact that I have to go downstairs to ask for the password, I mean, I'm a paying customer. You kind of automatically should let me know what the password is or at least have like a little paper thing in the rooms that states what the password is. Obviously, I've read this thing right here and it does say that you have to ask reception for the Wi-Fi password, but 
I mean, if you're already staying here, you would need it. No? Right, um, I'm still a little bit caught up on what to do in terms of food and water and stuff like that because by the time I'm one of those people when I check into a hotel room I like to unpack I like to unwind I like to freshen up however I do want to be watered and fed before I do all of that so I'm thinking hmm might go and grab something to eat just a little takeaway somewhere I've had a quick little look via Google it seems like quite a few places are closed at the minute but there's no harm in trying i do like this lift it's cute <sighs> it's currently 30 degrees and this mask thing is really not working for me i'm not gonna lie so i think i'm gonna pick up my groceries grab some food um, hold on, look at that. Um, as I was saying, yeah, I think I'm gonna pick up my groceries, get some food, and then I'm just gonna kind of chill in at my hotel, kind of unpack, unwind, have a shower, and then come back out maybe later on when it's a little bit, a little bit chilled and I don't have the continuous reminder to wear my fucking mask. So I was told that there are grocery shops if I walk down this street. I really do hope that is the case. Hey, I found it, it's right here guys. Whew, yep, I'm gonna grab some bits and I shall catch up with you guys later. Guys, I'm filming like this because I'm currently doing nude life. I completely forgot until a short while ago that here in Italy, they have something called siesta where things basically close down for a couple hours during the day, which meant that I managed to get my water but in terms of food, all the food spots are closed apart from fast food. And I managed to get this large portion of fries. You lot know I'm a fries fiend anyway. From a place called Chicken and Chicken. But yeah, this cost me four euros. Um, and obviously I got it with some barbecue sauce. So I'm literally about to indulge in that because I have not ate all day. And it is currently almost 4 p.m. I think things are going to begin opening up from 6 or 7 p.m. So literally, all I'm going to do right now is eat this. I've got Proud Family loaded up on my laptop. And then I'm going to unpack and stuff after... I think I might even get in a cheeky little nap, you know. I think I might get a cheeky little nap in as well. Might as well if everything's shut. And then later on, I'll just go around and see where the evening takes me. Good morning guys, this is day two of me being in Milan, so I landed here yesterday. What did I get up to last night? I'm not gonna lie, not a lot. I ended up conking out, I didn't even realise I was that tired and then I literally woke up and went to go grab some food. In terms of the food that I grabbed, I ended up getting McDonald's. I'm really not happy about that because I haven't ate McDonald's for about five years. I ended up getting McDonald's which i just think my donuts are so trash but there was nothing else available at the time i ate it my belly did not respond well last night my belly didn't respond well this morning so yeah at the minute what can i say about how i feel i can't really say much too tough because i don't feel like i went like i've properly gone out just of yet i will say that the siesta thing um, it's a little bit jarring, especially if you're not really a morning person, like you don't want to wake up early to go and grab something to eat or whatever. Um, so yeah, like this morning I woke up, I think I woke up about 8.30, but I had a couple things to do, including promoting some content. I haven't had any breakfast, but I think that's for the best because my belly's still acting up. But without me rambling too much, the plan for today is I'm going to meet up with a guy called Gabriel. And I came across him via Airbnb experiences. So basically he's a local here 
and he's basically just gonna show me a couple of the hot spots he's also gonna show me some great places that i can check out to eat which i'm really happy about because i'm not gonna lie i can't be doing mcdonald's and chips lifestyle i'm in italy for christ's sake like i want to actually try some authentic italian dishes and i'm really hoping that they do actually have like pescatarian stroke vegan options as well so yeah that's basically the plan for today i'm gonna obviously take you guys with me vlog as much as i possibly can because like i said to you lot i am trying very hard to fix up my vlogging skills also um i've been wearing uh, face masks and stuff i have a lot of um trouble breathing in the mask however uh what i do do is when i feel like i really need to get some air i will just yeah i don't know what it is but it feels like the best way for me to describe wearing a face mask for me is like somebody shoving my head underwater for a very long time and then i finally managed to escape and come up for air and then it's like yeah that's basically it however um my face masks are not too bad i'm not gonna lie uh one thing that i was quite surprised about actually is my makeup stayed in all very intact yesterday um i am very much aware that the majority of makeup products that i use aren't transfer proof anyway but also the mask that i wear i got it from ebay allows like room for you to breathe a little bit so that's very helpful nevertheless i'm gonna fling on my trainers and yeah i'll take you guys with me so guys i finally made it i got here really late because i got lost but i've met up with the wonderful gabriel hello to everyone yeah do you want to like just say like what you come, do come to milano that is a very beautiful city in north italy and uh, you are you are welcome see um i'm gonna leave a link to his profile on airbnb because that's where i came across him but yeah well, he's just giving me a nice little tour of places that i can go to and giving me a bit of a background of certain things that i don't know about in regards to milan so this is the biggest Starbucks in Europe, did you say? Yeah. Okay. Someone said, I guess it's true. <laughs> okay. Because it's very, very big. <laughs> so this is the Castello Sforzesco. Okay. It's one of the most historical places here in Milan. It was built uh, 5,020 years ago. Wow. So it's very old. Okay, and but the architecture is really pretty. It's Gothic Renaissance architecture. Okay and was building to defense uh, Milano from the invasions as a protection of the city. Oh, wow. So it's a uh, military purpose, and now is a cultural center. Mm. the Castello Sforzesco that was building uh, was finished building 5,020 uh, years ago oh wow and oh. was building with the purpose to protect uh, Milano from the invasions okay so to protect the city and Sforzesco goes the the name of the family is Forza because they build the gap, build the gap. Mm -hmm. and was the Dukes of Milan the Sforza family and there was, was the, either the, their uh, home Wow. So, yeah. Wow. It's a very historical place in Milan. Beautiful. So, where are we now? This is the Sforza Castello Sforzesco. Okay. The Castle Sforzesco. It's a very historical place in mm -hmm. Milan. And there is a long story behind it's a it. I would love to know what the story is. Yeah, there was the home of the Duke's Sforza. Okay. Francesco Sforza okay. and they ruled Milan about uh, 5,000 years ago mm -hmm. was the most powerful family in Milan oh, wow. and there is also a museum uh -huh. here on the right okay. and it's very interesting and a big park behind okay. Parco Sempione that is the, which we're going to go and check out in a minute of Milan yeah. where full of young guys uh -huh. people go there for sport running it's very, it's very nice. It was are the apartments of the dukes. Okay. And this was the yard of the dukes. Oh wow. Okay. okay. 
So here is called the the dead moat. Okay. Because there is no water anymore. So anymore? Did there used to be water? Yeah, in past years because it was uh, like a fortress, this castle, to protect oh. Milano f to, from the invaders. Oh wow! So there was yes, was a moat. This. That's interesting. Fossato morto in Italian. Hmm. <laughs> And this is the beautiful park, wow! Yeah, Parco Sempione. Parco Sempione, Sempione. Park. Sempione Park. There are many races of running here. Mm -hmm. I did even the Santa Claus running in winter <laughs> with <a> Santa Claus clothes. <laughs> That's funny. It was impossible to run, but it was yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> there was a red river here. Oh, wow! And that one is the Arco della Pace. Repeat that. Arco della Pace or Porta Sempione. Okay. Was finished building about 200 years ago to celebrate the peace war between uh, European state in uh, Vien Congress after the French Revolution. It's very important and historical place. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Now we will see close. And in that way there is Corso Sempione that is a way with uh, Many bars, cocktails. Oh, okay. Famous way, famous street for the nightlife. Oh. Do you like to so, party? <laughs> more or less. <laughs> I'm not so young now for. <laughs> Scala Square to yeah. the Duomo. Okay. And at the time, it was one of the first uh, shopping mall in the world. Oh wow! It is very ancient, very old. Uh, the rent for a shop here, in average, can cost two million euro. What? Yeah. Two million euro. Even higher, even lower, but the average is two million. Wow. This is hotel, five stars. This balcony. You have even the taxi driver 24 hours per day, of course. So my tour with Gabriel is done and I'm walking my ass home, which is perfect timing because I don't know if my camera could capture it, but it's actually quite cloudy. But I really enjoyed the tour. He taught me so much, showed me to a lot of places. I also discovered that there's this beautiful like river spot near my hotel, literally like a five, 10 minute walk away, if even that. And they've got like little bars and stuff there. So we sat down, had some drinks, four euro for half a glass of pineapple juice. But anyway, that is neither here or there. And also as I'm walking home, I've just discovered this really beautiful spot right here. Like, it is so beautiful. Like, I love places that have a lot of water surrounding it. But yeah, also one thing I am finding is I feel like my confidence with vlogging is slowly getting there because like, there's people watching me right now, but I'm still not gonna put the camera down. I do kind of feel anxious when I do have the camera up and there's like, bunch of guys just like gawping and shit but you know what it's fine um but yeah apart from that i've had a great day i'm going to take my ass to the hotel chill for a little bit and you know what i've decided tonight i'm actually gonna have a walk around so i shall see you lot later so the time is now 9 20 p.m i haven't ate all day actually but i don't know if that's just because i haven't felt compelled to eat not that you should only eat when you're hungry but i felt like after all the shenanigans of yesterday my body's kind of like Ugh, give us some time to just recuperate but nevertheless um i'm all dressed i'm wearing 
this dress which you lot have seen me wear before but uh i'm always going to be that person that will post pictures multiple times or have videos multiple times wearing the same pieces because guess what i have something called a washing machine <laughs> but anyway um i'm gonna make my way out i have no idea where i'm gonna end up at ideally i obviously want to find something to eat that is not fries that would be a great start and then i'll probably go for a little walk or so i'm not looking to be out for too long to be honest with you So that was my first experience here so far, sitting and eating in at the restaurant. The language barrier is really nuts, so I'm not gonna lie. Um, but the food was really good. I really enjoyed the food. The customer service as well was good. They did try. Um, but yeah, I just feel like the language barrier. But again, I can't really blame them. I only have myself to blame. You can't go to someone else's country and expect for them to speak English that's absolutely ridiculous but yeah and I'm just gonna go on a random walk and then take my ass home after that beautiful kings and queens so today is the last day the last full day of me being here in milan because i fly out tomorrow late at night but you know how it goes like when you've got to fly out late at night it's all about you waking up and getting ready to check out making your way to the airport and waiting around for your flight you know how it goes so basically as you can see i am dressed to go out however i'm not going to take you guys with me because I'm more or less going to be doing the same thing I did yesterday. I'm going to find a spot to eat. I'm going to walk around and all of that good stuff. So I thought I'll take this opportunity to basically round up this vlog and let you guys know my thoughts and feelings in regards to this holiday. Firstly, before I do get into that though, I want to say I am a little bit disappointed about how today turned out because like I said, today was my last day. Is, was, it's currently almost 8 p.m. and it's only now that I'm filming. I had basically planned on three different occasions. I planned to basically go and um, experience Lake Como. So before I came out to Milan, I tried to book it twice via TripAdvisor and it was cancelled on two occasions because not enough people had booked to do the tour. And then I booked a third time before leaving London and everything was fine, everything was cool. And then literally yesterday, last minute, I got a message to say, actually there's an error on our end it's not actually the 50 euros that you paid it's actually 400 euros and we basically got that wrong so unfortunately we're gonna have to cancel um 
yeah there was no way that i was gonna pay 400 euros for a tour i'm not gonna lie to you so yesterday i did actually have a browse via TripAdvisor to see what else i could do today instead and um there was the opportunity for me to go and basically walk up the cathedral but i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not a religious person i don't really care to want to go and visit a cathedral so i basically opted out which basically means that today i spend the majority of my day in my hotel basically looking for flights for my next trip god willing um not even god willing i have booked a next trip god willing it goes according to plan because of all of this coronavirus and stuff like that i've done some very stupid errors and ended up having to waste a lot of money trying to change flights and stuff like that and then finding out last minute that i need to go through hoops to get into certain countries but this country that i've booked in particular it seems like everything is smooth for british nationals fingers crossed so i'm looking forward to that however like i said i thought i'd take this opportunity to basically round up my thoughts and feelings in regards to this trip so first things first i do want to say Milan has got some beautiful scenery like I'm all about scenery and they've got some stunning scenery some stunning scenery like when you walk around there's so much to appreciate from like the little lakes and stuff to the beautiful lighting to all of the kind of colors to all the trendy kind of looks that here has that's very very appreciative one thing that i do really want to commend here for is um even though there is a massive language barrier and that's partially my fault because i don't speak italian i don't understand italian as well a lot of people here don't understand or don't speak english however on occasions when i have been lost and my maps has let me down and i've needed directions and stuff like that they've always been willing to like look at my phone screen and just like direct me with their hands visually one of the main highlights for me so far being here is my tour that i was given via gabriel yesterday again i think i've said this before I found him via Airbnb experience. I don't know why I can't get my words out, but yeah, it was via Airbnb experience that I booked him. And you know what? He was really fun. He was good vibes, um, very knowledgeable, very friendly. I really enjoyed that. I learned a lot. And also the weather was great. That's actually another thing that I need to say. Um, I was blessed enough that the weather was great. My weather app was a liar, you know, because before I came out, it was like rain, rain, rain. It's going to be hot. It's going to be rainy. But I think there's only been a bit of drizzle maybe once since I have been here. All of the people that work at the hotel have been really friendly. You know, they've done what they've needed to do. They seem really friendly. Anytime I've needed help, they'll help me out. I paid £154, I believe, for three nights here. I do like this hotel a lot. I'm not gonna lie, the location of it is brilliant. It's literally next to everything, whether it's the trams, whether it's the hotspots. Um, you can more or less walk to a variety of places. The only thing that I flipping hate is this. See this shower head right here? You can't remove it and it's a pain in the ass and I think that's anti-black because on several occasions, it's accidentally wet my locks. And if you're black, you know how much of an inconvenience that is because i'm very very much used to you know having or using showers where the shower head is removable i think that's my only been my only issue my only pet peeve about staying in this hotel <sighs> would i come to milan again honestly no and my reason is for this what i did not share with you guys last night yeah, I'm going to get to last night first before I explain other things. So basically, you lot saw I went to um, a sushi re restaurant. What I did not share with you guys was that when I went into the restaurant, as I was writing down my details and stuff, which had been asked of me by the workers at the restaurant, I could hear a guy shouting something, like proper shouting something in his language like i said to you guys i don't speak italian i don't understand italian so i turned around and it was this white italian guy and he's shouting at me shouting shouting and all i could hear is africa africa and i saw one of the workers at the restaurant literally like shoo him out so yeah i am very much aware that obviously what he was saying was not positive. I did not bother to ask what was being said, but judging by the woman's reaction and judging by the fact that he kept shouting Africa at me, yeah, clearly he's probably having a racist moment. 
Um, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm surprised because before coming out here, I had heard from both my white and both my black friends that Italy is known to be blatantly racist. So I'm not surprised. I'd also watched um, other travel vloggers, other travel woman solo vloggers at that say the same thing. So it was no surprise. However, I've always been one of those people. I like to be open-minded because I feel that different people can have different experiences like I could be saying that this is my experience and maybe you may be a black person watching this a black woman at that and you might come here for solo travel and whatnot and you might not even experience the same thing that I experienced last night another thing that I really didn't appreciate was the catcalling I believe catcalling or men behaving like absolute lunatics happens all over the world in London I get the same thing where I'm out and about and you know men will try and chat me up and stuff like that and that's fine you know there's nothing wrong with a guy seeing um seeing you and wanting to talk you up no but the way that it's done here it is done on steroids i constantly have men shouting out you know ciao bella ciao bella which apparently means beautiful woman and it's like okay cool i don't mind being called a beautiful woman but then they start making noises they start causing a scene sometimes there's groups of them and they're shouting at me from across the road um yesterday when i was with gabriel a guy came and just out of nowhere started singing and was like trying to like i think he was trying to get money out of us or something but yeah i've had that continuous type of thing like the continuous type of stares the continuous guys trying to talk to me um at some point yesterday when i was out and about by myself a guy tried to grab my arm and i was just like get off me what the fuck are you doing um so that uh, my food experiences as well hasn't been great but i'm gonna put it down to coronavirus as well and also that being said i am like pescatarian stroke part-time vegan as well because i'm severely intolerant so i'm not gonna lie the food experience for me personally um i will put that down to the pandemic i will put that down to the pandemic but I haven't enjoyed my food experience here at all, I'm not gonna lie. If you wanna come and experience good scenery, come through. Um, in regards to the food thing, I think it's probably predominantly down to my diet and also it, it, there is a pandemic. So a lot of spots and stuff are closed as well. In regards to racism, before anybody tries to write anything stupid, you can experience a racism everywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, I should say, especially when you're black where you are black in particular you will experience that shit anywhere in the world even the place that you were born like don't get it twisted in london we experience various types of racism even if it's like microaggressions and stuff in a workplace it all comes down to racism however to have it so blatantly where somebody is like shouting in africa and saying god knows what to me i've actually never experienced that before and i've been to a lot of places i think another place where i experienced racism was when i was in croatia but i can't remember where in croatia i was this was about five or six years ago overall um yeah i think this has been like my least favorite destination to visit i'm not even gonna lie. i'm just gonna make it very put it out there it's been my very least favorite destination to come and visit i wouldn't come back here again personally um, I wouldn't even come back here with a partner. I'm just, I'm not even interested in coming back to Milan. Would I go to another part of Italy? Maybe I would. Maybe I'm not gonna fully close the door on that. Maybe one day I will. However, what I will say is, if you are coming to Milan, um, and you do want somebody to show you around, or you just want a friend to hang out with and stuff like that, Gabriel was very cool. You know, like I said, that was one of my highlights. I feel like for whatever reason, three nights here has felt like two weeks for some reason there was no way i'm gonna come and basically lie and say oh my gosh i had such an amazing time to do the truth of the matter is i really didn't so i'm really hoping that my next trip is going to be a lot different i hope i don't experience blatant racism as well i hope that the language barrier won't be too bad on my next trip as well um and yeah i think that's basically all i can say basically but yeah thank you guys so so much for watching me as usual you know i love you lot so much man because without you guys i wouldn't be able to vlog i wouldn't be able to continuously put out content and stuff for you to watch have you guys been to italy before what was your experiences did you experience any racism did you have more of a better experience than i did i would really 
love to know and i would love for us to get to discussing but yeah i'm gonna go for a walk see if i can find something that i'd like to eat but yeah until next time take care be good see you